brothers and sisters that were methodically and with their heart and their whole might trying to follow these 613 laws. And then Paul, who was Jewish, is saying, no, you just have to be in relationship with Christ. And you have to let him be your justice and to follow him, to be right with him, so that you may become holy and full of love and blameless. So curveballs. The curveball of Jesus Christ. And how it can change up things so much. And to grow in holiness is to be required to change a lot. Because Jesus is calling us to that. And Jesus is so much to be changed into. We have so much room for that change. So the curveball of that. And the whole idea of cockroaches. Here's, I know, I was going to have a visual image of cockroach, but I thought that would be pretty gross, you know? So, <laughs> baseball's right, so uh, I did use some discretion, okay. But uh, cockroaches were around millions of years before dinosaurs, and they were around millions of years after dinosaurs. So dinosaurs, in all their strength, they became extinct. <laughs> pretty interesting. And there are thoughts out there, theological thoughts, that those who are strong die off because they cannot adapt to change. But those who are weak, they can adapt to change and live on. Those who are weak, those who are sinful, those who continue to judge other people and gossip, those who have the propensity for addiction, those who are weak, those who don't pray, those who forget that, that they can adapt and adapt to the situation to live. And St. Paul alludes to this. He tells us to be awake. To be awake. Do not be drowsy from drunkenness or carousing or laziness, but to be awake and to be ready to adapt in the way that I would put it, to adapt to the curveball of Jesus and what he is going to do in and through us in his life. And then, as we allow that to happen, the justice will come. We read about from our first reading, the love abounding, the right conduct that Paul calls us to, and that in confidence we can stand up before him because our redemption is at hand. We can stand up. One of the best curveballs I've found of all time, one of the best ways to experience the curveball of Christ is through the sacrament of reconciliation. He'll straighten you out. He'll show you a curveball of his infinite mercy. How important that is. And quite conveniently for yourself and all of us, myself, Next Saturday, December 6th, at 10 o'clock in the morning, we have our communal reconciliation service where we can come and adapt ourselves to the life that he's offering. The life, the wholeness of life that he's offering, that we would adapt ourselves like that and that we would live on. So we celebrate this year that. And I want to share with you, again, what St. John Vianney has to say about reconciliation and people coming to confession to, to, uh, to him and how he responds to different people in terms of their coming to confession. But he talks about and he invites us to this unfailing trust in the Lord, this God of mercy. And to enter in in the sacrament of reconciliation as our Pope Benedict talks about into this dialogue of salvation. The Savior wants to dialogue with the sinner. The Savior wants to dialogue with us and tell us who he is and what he's come for and what he offers. And not just to talk about that, but to write that on our hearts that we might experience that and come into union with that. The dialogue of salvation that we experience in the interchange when we give God our sins and he gives us eternal life. This is adapting to the curveball of Jesus Christ and the life of Christ. And John Vianney, the cure dealt with different penitents. They called him the cure of ours. Different penitents in different ways. Those who came to his confessional drawn by a deep and humble longing for God's forgiveness 
found him in the encouragement to plunge, plunge into the flood of his divine mercy, which sweeps everything away by its vehemence. The flood of his mercy that sweeps all that is bad and dark away by his power and his force and his vehemence. If someone was troubled by the thought of his own frailty and inconstancy, do you ever struggle with that? With the thought of your own frailty or inconstancy. How can I be faithful? I'm just not faithful. I continue to do those things that I don't want to do. I continue to sin. I continue to cross. Whatever that might be. And fearful of sinning again so the uh, getting down on ourselves, our inconstancy and our failures and sinning again. The cure would unveil the mystery of God's love in these beautiful and touching words. The good Lord knows everything. Even before you confess, He already knows that you will sin again, yet He still forgives you. How great is the love of our God. Listen to this. How great is the love of our God. He even forces Himself to forget the future so that He can grant us His forgiveness. He forces himself to forget the future, knowing that you and I will may very well sin again, and so that he can grant us his forgiveness. But to those who made a lukewarm and rather indifferent confession of sin, where are we? Is it, is it lukewarm or is it something that makes us cry? Does our sin? He clearly demonstrated his own tears of pain by how abominable this attitude was. I weep, John Vianney said, because you don't weep. He would say, if the Lord were not so good, if only the Lord were not so good, but He is so good. One would have to be a brute to treat so good a father this way. So that call and that invitation to let God and come into us, the curveball of Jesus Christ, and that we would adapt to that. We would let that come in. Such that we would cry over our sin and what that does. To pray for that gift. Because we can't have that gift without Christ. And that in that, that He would call us into His vehement mercy. His ferocious love for us in the sacrament of reconciliation. Stand up. Stand near. Your redemption is at hand. It is at hand. Jesus invites us in. Either we shut it out and become extinct like the dinosaurs or we adapt to it and live. 